Hi everybody. I'd like to demonstrate how to get started making movement through sequential art as you're drawing. This is a little tricky. And so I've made it super simple. You only need to include three cells as a requirement. And you need to show movement with one subject, one character. So before we get started, you might want to collect a couple of materials. You definitely want a pencil and an eraser because it's so much easier to draw lightly and edit as you go. You might also want a ruler or a straight edge, which sometimes I'll even use the edge of a box if I can't find my ruler, in order to make the cells of your comic strip. You can also print out comic strip panels from the internet or if you already have some graph paper, that kind of thing, that can help as well. I really like the look of hand-drawn cells that don't use a ruler, but I understand for some of you that might be a little messy for your taste. So you get to decide how you make your cells. I'm not requiring that you use a ruler, but I am gonna review how to use a ruler correctly so that you don't have any of the common problems people have when they use a ruler. All right, time to get started. When you start your comic strip, you're gonna to have to start thinking first about your character. Think about a very simple design for your character. Like my shirt, I decided to wear this shirt today because we have some really, really simple characters on my shirt. They're a fluff ball with feet, eyes, and legs. That's an easy character to draw. And then think about the motion you would like your character to do. I would like to do a throwing motion. So I'm not gonna use this character, I'm gonna develop my own. It could be a human character, it doesn't have to be. But think about how it might be easiest for you to draw. If it's something complicated like throwing or writing a name, you might want something that actually has hands instead of having a blob, for example. So think about your character and what's gonna be easiest to draw. And if you decide to change your character midway through, that's okay too. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I'm ready to start making some of my cells. And I have a special kind of ruler called a T-square. If you have one of these at home, that's awesome. If you don't have a ruler at all, that's fine too. I'm gonna show a couple different ways to make lines. If you have a T-square, one of the best things to do is just to line it up against the edge of your paper. So this blue part is hanging over the edge and that will keep everything lined up with the edge of my paper so that it's a perpendicular line. All right, and then I'm gonna hold always, hold my ruler with spread out fingers. Because I have everything sideways, I can't really do my normal big L shape, so I'm just gonna spread out my fingers like this and make a nice light line this way. And I just have to slide it down and slide it down and slide it down to make some lines. So everybody, we know that Ms. Forslund uses light pencil lines to start always, but it's difficult to see on the camera. And so I'm gonna do a little bit of showing you how to do the same thing with a darker pencil line, <clears throat> not a pencil, a pen, because it's much easier for you to see. I would like you to use a pencil though. So the same motion I'm gonna do again, but going the other direction. This way the binding of my notebook is getting in the way of my ruler. So I'm gonna show a different method of making lines. I'm gonna use the edge of a box. You might not have a ruler at home, and if you're sad about that, if you really wanted to use a ruler, that's okay. Find something with a straight edge, like a book that you're not worried about getting dirty, or a box like this. So I'm going to hold my box really still. Notice how I spread my fingers again. And then I'm going to make a line across. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes with a box or a book, you might get a little bump in your lines. So be careful of that. There's also smaller rulers that you can use. So there's lots of different types of rulers, but always remember to keep your fingers spread out. Okay, 
But notice how in most of the comic books, the cells are separated by a little bit of white space. Like in this book, there's a little bit of white space in between all of these cells. How did they make that happen? Well, you can add another line in between. If you use pencil, all I would have to do is erase in between here. But that's not required. If you would like to just keep them all smushed together, I'm okay with that for now. We're just learning about sequential art. Ooh, look, I have three cells already and I'm getting close to four or five. So that's one way to make your cells. Oh, now I have so many. And some of them are bigger and some of them are smaller. If you want to use measurements to create your cells, there's plenty of YouTube videos on how to measure correctly with a ruler. I'm not worried about that today. If you'd like to draw your own cells or create a different shape of a cell, You could use something that you could trace to make it a very clean shape, like with my crazy triangle ruler. Or you could invent a shape. It's up to you. Let's pause for a second and design our character. My motion is going to be throwing something. So I want a character that has arms, but I don't need any legs. Why would I draw legs? I can either decide to cut off my character halfway through their body and maybe do shoulders, a head, and arms with an elbow so that I can throw really easily. Or I could decide that I'm gonna have a blob character that has some arms that can throw. Okay, this is where an eraser is really important. If you were gonna draw a person, there's a special kind of figure called a block figure. And whenever we draw a person in art class, we start out with a rectangle for the body and a circle for the head. Block figures, instead of just a regular stick figure, do the same thing, but they use lines for the arms and legs so that showing motion is a little bit easier. But Ms. Forslund said, you have to turn your lines into shapes. So once you've figured out all your motions with your block figure, all you would do is make some shapes for the rest. So that could be a character too. You get to be creative with this, but try to create something that won't take you forever to draw over and over and over again. I'm gonna go with my blob character. Okay, now that I've got my blob character, I'm gonna open back up to my cells and I'm gonna remember that there's three humps in my blob because I wanna make sure it looks like the same blob in every picture. And the first thing I'm gonna do is think about where my body starts when I'm throwing. So I'm gonna practice throwing something imaginary. Okay, so at the very beginning of my throw, my blob is going to have its hand all the way back. Maybe the thumb is like this and there's a big ball in the center. And maybe I'll change its direction so that it's looking away. Okay. And then in the middle of my throw, my hand is almost in front of my head. Okay, so I need to draw my blob again. Uh-oh, it doesn't look quite the same. I better erase. My hump's got a little bit too sharp. Okay, that looks better. Yeah, and I'm gonna make sure the eyes are in the same place, more or less. Maybe the mouth is starting to go a little bit different in the arm. Hmm. Hmm, the arm is more, let me try that again, maybe throw again. So it's gonna be more straight up and down. And then at the end of my throw, my hand is all the way forward and it might cross over my blob's face. 
So I'm sort of measuring, not super carefully, but a little carefully where things go. That looks pretty good. Okay. And then this time it is going to be a little bit sadder. And my arm is going to come out in front. Maybe a little bit more this way. So it might cover up my eye a little bit. Now I can go back and correct anything I think I maybe didn't do so well. Like maybe the wind up. Maybe I need to go straight out. I'm going to redo my throw and maybe I'll correct the first one. Because once I see it, I can kind of see there's sort of a problem. It needs to be more of a wind up. Let's ink him in so we can see him better. Okay, one thing that it might not be easy to notice right now is where the ball is in my picture. Now that I've inked it, I can really go at it with my eraser to make sure that all my details are easy to see. And now I can start to color in to emphasize where the ball is, and that will help my viewer understand that the ball got thrown. Ah, the ball is good! I like to, to color in and add color in the same sequence and all of the same things at the same time so that I don't forget which color I was using. Sometimes colored pencils don't look exactly like their paint on the side looks. And so it's really helpful to use the, the colored pencil that you're using for one thing for all the things that have to be the same so that you don't lose that colored pencil. Notice how I'm working on the outside edges more slowly so that I can color in a little bit quicker. That's the bumper car method. You can even repeat something with some faint lines and experiment with that too if you like. I can't wait to see what you gotta do. Oh my gosh. Even though I'm requiring you to draw three cells and show motion, if you draw five, if you make a whole page and show motion, that's awesome too. If you have three characters or four characters, I can't wait to see it. But if this is intimidating to you, stick with the three cells in your character making one motion, and that's okay too. I love to fill in my comic strips with color, but if you'd like to use a thin, pen or marker to add in some line weight or some shading. That's okay too. You can keep it black and white if you like. I just want us all to start experimenting with sequential art. All right, let's get making.